Wolf makes a point that feminists still make today, that the world is actually hostile to women's writing. It's not just that there are certain circumstances that make it harder for women to have the freedom to write, but that the world actually doesn't want women to write and is working against them actively. She quotes Oscar Browning, who said that the best woman was intellectually the inferior of the worst man. I definitely think that the most intelligent, most genius woman is the inferior of the most genius man and probably a certain percentile like from the top even. I don't think the smartest woman is the inferior of like the worst man because men are on this bell curve where they have the best but also the worst. It's a funny quote though. Wolf makes another point that current feminists make that women are discouraged and this is bad. This is something that's super hard for them to overcome. They can't just let it flow over them like water over a duck. She's essentially making a case that women are too sensitive to deal with this stuff because she says a father could use that quote against his daughter if he didn't want her to leave home and become a scholar or a writer or a painter. And also that the girl could read these opinions herself and quote, it must have lowered her vitality and told profoundly upon her work. Wolf says that, quote, there would have always been that assertion. You cannot do this. You are incapable of doing that to protest against, to overcome. So women are always having to fight this uphill battle and it's just so hard. But I don't think that male artists were necessarily encouraged always by their parents or peers. Unfortunately, it is precisely the men or women of genius who mind most what is said of them. Literature is strewn with the wreckage of men who have minded beyond reason the opinions of others. Well, like tough cookies. She's essentially making some case that we should recognize genius and then put them all in this like quiet room with paper and art supplies so they can just create. Well, that's not life, honey. If you can manage to create under whatever circumstances, that's what you got to do. That's all there is. In current year, as humanity marches on, as we get more and more technological wealth, this becomes easier because even the poorest people can end up having space for themselves and time for themselves because they don't have to spend all day doing the washing or making sure they have food. If they live in a city or a sizable town, there are all kinds of enrichment programs and support for people who want to create. There are online classes you can take for free or low cost. So the world is more open than ever to people who want to be creative from all across the socioeconomic scale, including women. I think that great works of genius have been positively influenced by the unfortunate circumstances of artists' life. Whereas Wolf is very insistent on the idea that the artist needs to not put himself into the art, that his mind must be clear that we shouldn't know anything about the artist, essentially. And she says that Shakespeare's mind was incandescent and we don't know his personal baggage because his state of mind didn't color his work. Wolf says that her time is more sex conscious than ever and she blames the suffrage movement because essentially the movement must have made men put special emphasis on being men because they were challenged by it. She shares this anecdote about a friend of hers who essentially is, you know, one of the good guys, but he took this book by a woman and he read this passage and he called her a feminist because she says men are snobs. And Wolf says the statement has nothing to do with her being a feminist. It's just a true if uncomplimentary statement. So this was clearly, quote, a protest against some infringement of his power to believe in himself. This whole line of thinking is still present in feminism today where feminists will say, oh, if men don't support feminism, it's clearly because they're just trying to protect their own position of power over women. They don't want to step back and let women have the power, which if women were powerful, then couldn't they just seize the power for men? Why do they need men to step back? As I've said before, if men would just take the boot off our neck, then we could come into our power. We can't grab their ankle and throw them to the ground. No, no. We need to just be like, hey, Mr. Oppressor, can you just not. And she says that Elizabethan literature would have been different if the women's movement had started then, that men would have been just as sex conscious then. She makes this point that there's essentially a male and female side to the brain in everyone. Men should be man-womanly and women should be woman-manly. Mostly you're a man, but there is this like female part of your brain that you need to like incorporate and use and vice versa for women. So that men are only writing with the male side of their brain in her time and and so the writing isn't as good. She says it's fatal 
for anyone who writes to think of their sex, that women shouldn't be stressing their grievances, pleading a cause, or quote, in any way to speak consciously as a woman. That if you do so, your creative efforts will not take root in other people's minds. They will not endure. They will wither and die. She gives an example of a noble woman who was a poet. Much of her poetry rants angrily against women's position in the world and sees men as the enemy, quote, because they have the power to bar her way to what she wants to do, which is right. But she says that this woman must have been this way because she was forced to that anger and bitterness because of the sneers and laughter that she had to face. Women can't toughen up and deal with it. The whole world's against them and it just makes it like so hard for them to write works of quality, you know? It's just insane to me. It's like the same thing that happened when the Google memo dropped. People were making this argument like, oh, this makes it an unsafe space for women because this one guy wrote this document that implies that women are higher on neuroticism, aka sensitivity to negative emotion than men. And so our reaction to that is going to be, we're going to stay home because we feel so unsafe, aka we're going to prove him right that we're more sensitive to negative emotion than men. I can't even imagine a scenario, even when I was a hardcore feminist, so maybe I wasn't hardcore enough, where I would have felt so unsafe or so traumatized by a man writing a document, even implying in the slightest that I was inferior to him in some way. I'm definitely more disagreeable than the average woman. Even when I was a hardcore feminist, even if I was possessed by ideology, my response to that document would not have been to go home. My response would have been like, wow, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, or like, fuck him. But it would not have been to go home because I felt unsafe. I was more one of the fuck you feminists, not the, oh no, men are being mean to me, whatever shall I do? feminists. She makes the blasphemous claim that men and women are different and have different values and write about different things, but that what men value is prized more. And so what men write about, like writing about war, is seen as serious and important, whereas women writing about personal relationships and social interactions is not seen as important. Which is still a point the feminists make today. Once they've moved the goalposts from the whole men and women are just the same and we're all equal, once you've gotten them to admit that men and women are different and they value different things, they will say, and we need to get the feminine up there. Like with the wage gap, they'll say, oh, well, yes, women do like to do different jobs than men. The problem is those jobs don't get paid as much because we don't value women's work. So we need to pay those professions more money. Wolf even says it would be a pity if women wrote like men. They have different creative power that they've spent millions of years sitting indoors. Wolf's metaphor for aspiring female novelists is that they have to run and jump over fence after fence, never stopping to rest because there's always all these obstacles in their way whether it's the patriarchy telling them they can't write, men shouting at them, you can't do this and you shan't do that. There will always be interruptions because she has to be a mother and take care of the domestic life. Even though Wolf managed to avoid having children, so other women could do the same if they want to. The problem is most women want to have children and tend to the domestic life, so they have to balance both of those things. I think that Virginia Wolf is a very singular woman. I think that most of the women who have created works of genius are very singular women. I can think of Camille Paglia writing Sexual Personae, this massive work, and she never had children. She's very abrasive. She's very forceful. She doesn't take shit from anyone. She has a very singular mind. Or I also think of Simone de Beauvoir, who wrote The Second Sex, which is this massive 800-page magnum opus of feminism. And she also never had children. And I've only just started reading The Second Sex and researching Simone de Beauvoir, but she also seems like a woman who was atypical in many ways. So I don't think it's that women can't be geniuses or create works of genius, but I think that most women don't have the mind or personality for it, or if they do have the seed of potential, they choose to do other things. This is a point that Esther Villar touches on in The Manipulated Man, which I have not finished reading, but essentially that women have some potential when they start out, but they choose to go on this path to get married and have kids and not to nurture any of that or to spend the incredible amount of time and focus and dedication it takes to do anything great. I think not just of creative artistry, but in the physical space, I think of the free solo climber, Alex Honnold. How many women not only have the personality to take that kind of risk, but also to spend the hours that it would take 
to get that good. I think that in current year, there is nothing stopping a woman who wants to be creative from being creative. And I think there's nothing stopping a woman with the seeds of genius within from creating that work of genius. It's never been easier to get educated with the internet and the availability of online classes. There's never been more to read and study. It's never been easier to write and share what you write with other people, to find writer support groups, to publish your work online, to self-publish your work, to engage with your readers. And same goes for other forms of art. It's never been easier to put your music out there on Spotify or SoundCloud. You don't even have to go on tour. But I do think there is a distinction between creativity and genius, and it's sometimes hard to tell in Wolf's book if she's really making a separation between the two, because women do very well in the creative space. They are very successful as authors, especially in the romance space, and they're very successful with like online Etsy shops, making jewelry, and selling other kinds of artwork, and they're very successful as singers. There aren't as many successful like female metal musicians, but female vocalists top the charts constantly. Will there ever be a female Michelangelo or Leonardo da Vinci? I don't know. I kind of think no. I think maybe there's like a one in a billion somewhere out there, but it seems like biology did not predispose women to have the kind of obsessive focus and the kind of brain needed to create true works of genius. Certainly not the average woman, certainly not even the above average woman. We're talking like 0.1% of the population, maybe. Women tend to be more jack of all trades. They're good enough at different things that they can go into different fields, whereas there are a lot more men who are kind of good at one thing and they kind of need to just like go do that. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And I hope to have more content for you very soon.